This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm going to do things my way, innit? If, if Wilder works, we're going to make it happen. If Wilder isn't the right opponent for, for, for next year, then we'll put it back on the, into 2019. I'm going to take fights at the right time for me. Yeah, if it's next year or the year after or the year after, when I fight him, I'll be in a position to be. It's too early for Wilder to fight Joshua, really, but I would like to see it happening in two years' time when they're both huge and, they, and we're talking about a billion dollars income and not a hundred billion dollars income. We, yeah, we had an email last night from Deontay Wilder offering us $50 million, apparently. And I just written back and said, look, obviously we'd be very interested in that offer, but now we need to see quite a few things. Proof of funds will be nice. We're not asking to see proof of funds. They made us a very good offer. Some of the points in that offer were good. Some were acceptable, some were unacceptable. But the basic response from AJ, Rob McCracken, a fight of this magnitude, of this history, should take place in the U.S. Welcome back to Keep It Real Boxing. This is Cypherbox. Okay, so I kind of want to do a quick video on this story which broke, what, over a week ago now, yeah? And I'm a little bit late to the table on this one, but I kind of still want to give my point of view. Now, this story is basically around Sky Sports Boxing and their attempt of what I can only see as media propaganda, right? So it's definitely a media propaganda campaign they're trying to get going regarding Wilder versus Fury. And as you can see the tweets, they're on the um, screen. And I'm just going to read through them for you and then give you my take. So it says, Unlicensed at Tyson Fury does not yet have a license to box in New York or Vegas despite plan to fight at Bromance Bomber. And they've linked, you know, the article that they've put together on their uh, website, I'm guessing, yeah? Frank Warren's turned around and said, uh, comes back with a tweet and says, Hi at Sky Sports Boxing. You know, he screenshots their, uh, their tweet and then, he adds a little reply in there of his of his own and as you can see on the far right okay you've got frank warren's reply and here it is and it says sky news corp propaganda at it again one the fight hasn't even been confirmed to take place in nevada or new york why would why would he have applied for a license there yet billy joe saunders hasn't applied to fight in boston yet but you are promoting that fight on your schedule as of today, Povetkin is not cleared by the local commission to box yet in the UK for the AJ pay-per-view in three weeks' time. All three boxers will get, the, get licenses, but this type of journalism is embarrassing, lazy, unprofessional and so poor it verges on being funny. I.e. Fury v. v, v Wilder, in the words of the real heavyweight champion, it's on like Donkey Kong. Clearly, it looks like Sky Sports, in my opinion, are threatened by this fight taking place, you know, between Wilder versus Fury. You know, why would you put an article out like that? And yeah, you have to wonder who's put this journalist up to it. You know, because was it Adam Smith, the head of Sky Sports Boxing? You know, did Eddie Hearn have something to do with it? You know, because I doubt this journalist would have sat there thinking, oh, let me go and have a look if Tyson Fury's applied for a license just yet and then write a story on it. You know, usually journalists go with a story when someone kind of hints something to them. So whether Eddie Hearn said, oh, you know, I think the fight's great, etc. You know, but I, from what I understand, I don't think, you know, Tyson's applied for a license yet. And then the journal and you kind of set a seed there and then the journalist goes off and thinks, oh, let me go do my homework and slap a, a, an article out about this. But it is embarrassing because the funny thing is, I was watching The Boxing Voice the other day and UK Rob was on, on there. He's one of the panellists on there. And you know UK Rob if you watch The Boxing Voice. He 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 protects Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn. Got nothing against uh, against the guy. I actually like UK Rob. I think he's a pretty funny bloke. Um, and he's a good, a good addition to the panel. Um, but even he said he reached out to Eddie Hearn and ask Eddie Hearn, what are your thoughts on what Frank Warren has just said 
in regards to that tweet from Sky Sports Boxing and the article. And he turned around and said, Eddie Hearn turned around and said to Rob, well, there's nothing I really can say because, you know, Frank's actually right. Most fighters don't get their licenses, you know, until a couple of weeks before the actual fight. And that was Eddie Hearn coming from Eddie Hearn. Yeah, that's right. Eddie Hearn agreed with Frank Warren that what Frank Warren had stated was true. So, you know, it's absolutely, you know, it, I can't believe how much this potential fight with Wilder versus Fury, how upset it's made some people. Like, are you boxing fans or not? Because, listen, I was up obviously quite, I felt let down and disappointed about that we didn't get AJ versus Wilder in September. And everyone knows how critical I've been of Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua Barry Hearn. Okay. But at no point did I turn around and say that, Oh, you know, I, I hope, you know, the AJ versus Povetkin fight falls through. Oh, that's such a crap fight, etc, etc, etc. No. Don't get me wrong, I think AJ versus Povetkin's a good fight. It's a decent fight, you know. I'm sure Povetkin will try and bring it and bring it the best he can. And, and AJ will get a little bit tested, hopefully, as well. But I haven't hated on it and said, oh, I hope it falls, you know, falls apart. I hope Povetkin gets injured or I hope AJ gets knocked out or, you know, all that sort of stuff. No, because you know why? Because I'm a boxing fan. I want to see good fights. I would have rather seen a great fight between Wilder and AJ. But with all the bullshit games that Eddie Hearn's been playing and that I've been exposing between him and Barry Hearn and Anthony Joshua and Robert Kraken, okay, the fight didn't. The fight didn't materialize between Wilder and AJ. So now we have to settle for AJ versus Povetkin, which is still a good fight. But you've got all these AJ fans saying, oh, I hope, you know, watch Fury will pull out. Oh, watch, you know, um, you know, the contract hasn't been signed. This fight isn't happening and all this and all that, etc, etc, etc. My question is, are you boxing fans or not? Why would you not want to see a fight between these two guys? Yeah, a lot. I understand a lot of people's uh, opinions where they're saying, "Oh, Fury's not ready for this fight." Okay, all right, fair enough. That's your opinion. The question is, does he feel like he's ready for the fight? Because it seems like to me, he feels like he's up for it and he's ready and he feels he can do the job. That's Tyson Fury I'm referring to there. Okay, let's not forget when he fought Vladimir Klitschko, he fought Christian Hammer before that, and I believe was it Derek Chisora. In, you know, in the lead up to that fight with Vladimir Klitschko. Christian Hammer, when you watch that fight, Christian Hammer, who is he? He's nothing. He's not a great fighter. Do you know what I mean? I'd put him on par with, you know, or maybe a little bit above uh, Pinienta, who ties to fault recently. So everyone's talking like, oh, he hasn't had serious competition. Well, he didn't have any real serious competition in the build-up, in the run-up to Vladimir Klitschko when he beat Vladimir Klitschko in 2015. But I don't understand why boxing fans are hating on this fight so much because I don't hate on AJ versus Povetkin. You know, I will be tuning in to watch that fight, which means I'm going to be paying a pay-per-view price for it. You know, and if Eddie Hearn is so a matchroom and Sky Sports with their DAZN deal are so confident they're the kings of boxing, why would you be threatened by it? You know? So I totally agree with what Frank Warren said. Um, you know, it's nothing but media propaganda, which kind of highlights the fact that you're clearly threatened by this potential fight, this mega fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. You know, and it's sad to see, to be honest with you. And you know, all the fans out there who are make, you know, who are trying to, who are wishing that this fight will fail and the, you know, the, you know, the the fight won't be made. You know, and if the fight does get made, that. Um, Tyson Fury pulls out or something happens that prevents the fight from happening you know you're not really boxing fans in my opinion if that's the train of thought that you're running with yeah okay and finally before I kind of sign off I just kind of want to address a couple of of the AJ fans that jumped on my last video it's quite funny you get the usual I, I do laugh at it you don't, 
you know, one guy jumped on my video immediately, left a whole load of comments and then came back the next morning, like 10 or 11 hours later to leave another comment, you know, and accuse me of being a wilder fanboy and stuff like that, etc. And I was like, oh, whatever, you know, I've heard this stuff all before. Simple fact of the matter is I don't, I don't, I'm not going to address every comment. Okay. Um, because I've already done that, you know, in my previous videos, I've provided facts and information to prove my point and to prove that who's to blame for Wada and Anthony Joshua not taking place this September. And again, continue games that Eddie Hearn has been playing, right? But there was one comment regarding where someone turned around and actually said to me that, oh, you know, you've got selective hearing clearly. Did you not hear Barry Hearn say that, you know, he would potentially like to see the fight also potentially he, he wouldn't mind it if it was made by the fall of 2019 and you know what i've got the sound audio clip for that part so i'm going to play it and give you my take on it all right because i did forget to mention that bit that barry hearn actually said that in my last video so let's address that yeah so if it's your personal preference you would choose for aj to fight him in two years time from now two years would be the maximum the most likely thing for me would be fall 2019 okay so let's take note of the way coogan cassius asked him that question and by the way shout out to him and his channel ifl tv of course but let's let's take note of that so if it was your preference you would wait two years to make wilder versus fury it's the way he said it like shocked surprised like really you're gonna make the boxing fans wait two years and then Barry Hearn, obviously, casually, he, he's very good, Barry Hearn. You can, you can see where Eddie Hearn's learned it from. Uh, he's realised what he said there, and he thinks, um, and as you say, well, uh, when he's doing that, that's him kind of putting his words together. Actually, uh, you know, I kind of need to double back here a little bit. And then turn around and say, oh, well, you know, at, you know, at the earliest, you know, the fall of 2019, of course. Yeah. But the only reason he said that was because of the question that was put to him by Coogan Cassis, a question that was put to him with sh with the with shock and surprise. Yeah? If Coogan Cassis hadn't asked that question, Barry Ahern wouldn't have made that comment saying that at earliest he would like to see AJ versus Wilder by the fall of 2019. So for that individual who left that ridiculous comment in my last video, there's my answer to you, okay? Now, obviously, I, I obviously forgot to talk about this in my last video, but I'm addressing it now. But now I have a question for that individual who left that comment. And not only really just that individual, AJ fans as a whole. I've watched a lot of videos on that Barry Hearn interview. Yeah. A lot of posts on social media. And the one thing that AJ fans have not addressed or tried to explain is Barry Hearn's final comments when it came to the AJ Wilder uh, conversation in the IFL interview. Yeah, so I'm going to play it for you now because it sounds like you are quick to accuse people like me, my channel, and other channels out there of selective hearing and being biased. Well, clearly, you AJ fanboys are the ones with selective hearing. Clearly, you are the ones with bias because none of you have addressed this issue or this comment and given a reasonable exp explanation to it. So I'm going to play you the audio clip now and I want you guys in the comment section of this video to explain it to me because it doesn't make sense. So I'm, I'm very happy, but look, worst case scenario, if AJ's unbeaten for 10 years and doesn't fight Deontay Wilder, I'll take that. So I'm, I'm very happy, but look, worst case scenario, if AJ's unbeaten for 10 years and doesn't fight Deontay Wilder, I'll take that. If AJ goes 10 years undefeated and never fights Wilder, I'll take that. If AJ goes 10 years undefeated and never fights Wilder, I'll take that. That's what Barry Hearn said. And not one of you AJ fanboys out there have responded or acknowledged or tried to even explain what Barry Hearn is saying there. That he's happy for Anthony Joshua to go the next 10 years undefeated without fighting Deontay Wilder. 
I mean, that's embarrassing. That's shocking. And what's even worse is that you AJ fans go around accusing everyone of this or all these channels, all the channels like my own, people, real boxing fans out there um, of being biased and haters, etc. and stuff like that. But yet, and telling us that we've also got selective hearing. Well, clearly, I haven't got selective hearing. I forgot to, t uh, to touch on a point in my last video, but I've addressed it in this video. But not one of you, because I asked this question in my last video as well, and not one of you answered it. So I'm putting it to you again. Explain to me Barry Hearn's comments that you just heard that if AJ goes 10 years without undefeated, without fighting Wilder, he'll take that. He'll be happy with it. He's 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 got no problem with that whatsoever. Explain that to me. Whatever. Clearly, you know, I've proven again. Who's the biased ones out here? Who's the ones with selective hearing? Because it ain't me on this channel. Yeah? I said this before, I'm a neutral boxing fan. If I see and smell bullshit, I'm going to call it. And that's what upset, what upsets you AJ fans. Is every time I do a video, I provide facts. And I back my opinions and my videos upon facts. I've done it with all the videos regarding AJ versus Wild. I've done some videos that are like an hour and a half long, breaking it down with audio clips, articles, everything. All the proof and evidence you need. But none of you guys can ever provide me with anything. And none of you guys have in the last video which I asked to explain that comment have done so so I'm going to ask you again to explain that comment by Barry Hearn that he's happy for AJ to go 10 years undefeated and never fighting Deontay Wilder that's all I got for you guys on this one as always like share and subscribe until next time this is Cypher Box reminding you to keep it real